What's going on guys? Back again here with a actually new type of video series. Uh, I'm actually going to do what my man Kevin Yee does and just have these kind of videos where I respond to some of your questions. Um, figure that'd be more interactive and maybe more personable uh, with some of the viewers out there. So uh, with that being said, let's go. The first question I got here is from my man Neil Patel. He asked this about a month ago on the Introducing Pharmacy Informatics video. Uh, so maybe Sam can chime in on some of these questions as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just read his question. He says, hey guys, thank you for this information of video about pharmacy informatics. I recently just graduated with a PharmD degree and as I study for the NAPLEX, I am also thinking about my possible future careers. One of them is nuclear pharmacy, but I'm also interested in informatics. In terms of job employment, what kind of positions are available? What's the lifestyle of pharmacy informatics? What exactly is our role in the healthcare industry? My man, my man Neil's got a lot of questions. I can probably do a whole video on you, Neil, but uh, that's good. That's good to be inquisitive. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I don't know how to code, but what does pharmacy informatics entail? Do you need to become a licensed pharmacist to practice in pharmacy informatics? I've never heard of this area throughout pharmacy school. Much is appreciated. Thanks again for this introduction video. I hope to hear more about this new career of pharmacy. All right, my man, Neil. First question here, in terms of job employment, what kinds of positions are available? So for informatics, um, some of the positions I've noticed so far kind of fall into one of two categories fall usually in a very technical role. So we have like individuals who specialize in report writing, uh, data analysts, business analysts that do more like pulling of reports using SQL, Oracle databases, and those kind of tools. So you're usually more tech oriented in those cases. And then there's also other individuals that do um, computer-based programming where they use Cache or they use Python, uh, Java, things like that to create and develop uh, programs. In addition to some of the more technical roles, there's also various clinical roles. So things like uh, analyst positions where you build medications, you build order sets, you design uh, clinical decision support. So roles that require more use of your clinical skills. In addition to that, you also have your traditional hierarchy of informatics supervisors, informatics managers, informatics directors, um, things of that sort. So all different types of flavors, but in a nutshell, those are kind of some of the broad categories that I've seen. So next question, what is the lifestyle of pharmacy informatics? Honestly, it's very chill. Um, I think if anyone, every time someone asks me about uh, informatics, they're like, you know, how's it like, things like that. I'm, I'm just like, it's chill and it's flexible. It's, it's awesome, you know, as opposed to the traditional patient care roles um, that you may have as a pharmacist, Informatics Pharmacy is indirect patient care. And because of that, it's just flexible in nature. So if I need to take a day off, I take a day off. If I have an appointment I need to go to in the middle of the day, I go to an appointment in the middle of the day. And the reason why is because you have a project deadline, a goal that you want to achieve, and then here's your starting point. You know how you get there doesn't really matter as long as you get there, meet those pro meet that project goal, um, exceed it if you can. The path of getting there is very flexible. Sometimes you can work many hours. Sometimes you can work very little hours. So that that kind of lifestyle for me feels very chill. So next question. Uh, what do we got? What exactly is our role in the healthcare industry? So I can probably spend many, many videos talking about this, but in a very nutshell response, I think the way that I would view this is um, that pivotal publication by the Institute of Medicine in 2001, right? It was called To Air is Human. And the thing is, that really, in my opinion, set the pace for the exponential growth of transitioning from paper to electronic health records. Um, and then regulations, law, the, um, both the Bush and Obama administration really pushed this agenda. And now you know, the demand and growth of electronic health records are everywhere. With that being said, 
our role as individuals in this field of informaticists is to design and build these complex electronic health systems to lead clinicians to do the right thing in the interest of better patient care. It's the role in my opinion is so awesome and so rewarding because the potential impact you can have on not only the the lives of millions and millions of patients but you know also the the satisfaction of all the clinicians that take care of those patients is is limitless in my opinion you know you can truly impact so many individuals with that so the role our role i think is so crucial so pivotal and as we go forward and in my in my opinion our role is actually vital to the future of the healthcare industry all right so the next question is i don't know how to code but what does pharmacy informatics entail the majority of my colleagues that i know actually don't have any coding experience I actually happen to have some because I had dabbled in engineering before I got into pharmacy, but the majority of my colleagues do not. And it, not a hindrance at all, not a big deal. Um, and I think that you know that's a very common myth of pharmacy informatics or informatics in general, that it's all programming, you sit behind a desk, it's all coding. But I have another video that I think you'll like and it'll get a little bit more in a Detailed but not so detailed, higher level explanation of pharmacy informatics. So I'll pass that your way. So for the next question is, do you need to become a licensed pharmacist to practice in pharmacy informatics? And the short answer is yes. Um, there could be many reasons why. I'll just say that, you know, in the role we play, we have to understand our clinical information and cl have our clinical knowledge and also understand state regulatory issues because, you know, when you're designing and building a system, it's important to know your state law. It's important to know whether or not the things you build are actually in alignment with the law or against the law. You certainly don't wanna build something that is against what the state uh, law says. So short answer though is yes. All right, so that's kind of your questions. Uh, thanks for your inquiry. If you have more questions, definitely hit me up. Uh, moving on, let's see here, we have so Lenise M, cool avatar by the way, it looks like like four different worlds or something like that. But you know, pretty sweet avatar. So Lenise's question is, hi Brian, I'm a P4 right now, I didn't apply to residency. What do you think about post-grad certificate programs in pharmacy, informatics? Some of them you can roll over the credits to continue your master's also. Do you think that training is sufficient to get into the field? Or Lenise, that's a pretty good question. Um, I'm not sure which post-grad certificate, certificate program you're speaking of. The only pharmacy informatics certificate I know of is ASHP's. And I know that one only gives you CE credit. It doesn't do, um, doesn't allow you to transfer credits into an MBA program. But I know that the ASHP Foundation though offers a, uh, like some courses you can take. And it's the Pharmacy Leadership Academy. I post a link in the the description below, but those I know you can transfer into an MBA program. But uh, regardless though, your question was mainly uh, about whether or not training is sufficient to get into the field. So as it relates to like certificate programs and uh, maybe even a master's since you mentioned that, is I think it really depends. Uh, and I, this is not gonna, I don't, maybe, and I don't know how helpful this answer is gonna be to you, but in my experience, what I've seen in, you know, looking at the job descriptions for these type of positions and also being on the other side where I've interviewed and uh, actually hired um, con contractors and consultants into the positions, um, a couple things that I look at is number one, work experience. Work experience means a lot, you know, just, just because you have a certificate or a master's and even residency training sometimes. Um, Work experience, me in my opinion, makes a huge, huge difference. And when I was hiring individuals, uh, that was one of the key things I looked for. Granted, you are speaking, yeah, you're so you're a P4, so you're speaking from the perspective of a P4. So I'm assuming you don't have any work experience in informatics. So with that being said, um, master's program, 
that's another consideration in the job postings and in some of the things I look for is individuals that have a solid grasp on the fundamentals of informatics. So it doesn't matter what kind of work experience you may have, but as long as you understand the fundamental concepts and principles, you know, you should be able to design and build systems that are in alignment with the practice of informatics. So I think masters or those kind of structured uh, recognized programs is helpful. Um, certificate programs are helpful as well, but from what I've seen, what I've seen is masters specifically is called out in job descriptions and it's also something I look for myself. Um, I haven't actually seen too many individuals with those certificate programs as of yet, uh, though I would probably give them more credibility or weight than someone who doesn't have one. But in the end though, regardless of whether or not the training is sufficient, it's certainly desirable to have that kind of training or some type of um, core didactic type training like a certificate or master's. Uh, honestly, in, and in reality, a lot of the individuals that enter into this field right now, it's very much on the job training. A lot of individuals are new, this field is very new, so didactic courses is not very common uh, unless you are like a diehard informatics person and you know you want informatics so because of that I think it really depends if you're looking for some type of job on who you know I, I think networking is so important you know back a couple years ago just having an interest in informatics you could easily get a position um, surprisingly you know nowadays when I was I was looking at some of the resumes of individuals applying to these positions and I was very surprised about with the amount of experience that these individuals possessed and makes me think that you know maybe it's not that easy to get an uh, informatics position now however that's from the perspective of looking at resumes for individuals coming into these high these large programs you know these well-renowned programs um, I think that you know some of the smaller programs, smaller sites, no matter your experience, if you can network well and if you have an interest, you can still get into those positions. Granted, it may not be in a large uh, academic medical center or a uh, city that you might want to live in, something like that. So hopefully that answered your question. It was kind of a long-winded, but hopefully that helps. And lastly, this one's a comment, not a question, from David Vu. Uh, he says, awesome videos, thanks for keeping it real. Fourth year pharmacy student in Virginia, shout out to you my man. I wish I saw your video sooner, I would legit fly and do an informatics rotation with you if you ever took in students. Keep spreading the knowledge. I'm Ann David. So if you are interested, you know, we do have a PGY2 informatics program here at Mayo. So you definitely have an opportunity if you go down the residency route of doing a PGY2 here with us at Mayo. We actually have a lot more other PGY2, actually the most PGY2 trained informatics pharmacists here at Mayo. So you actually get some solid education if you come over here. The last comment I'll make about this is that I am so, so thankful and grateful that um, I have 290 subscribers. It's crazy to think that, you know, just a couple months ago, I had, I think, 12 or 15 subscribers. And even though that's still a very small number, 290, um, it's surprising to me that people actually watch, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's just kind of surprising to me. I am, but I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the support. Appreciate the love. Um, keep watching, keep asking questions. Uh, feel free to message me. Love interacting with you guys. Sometimes I get caught up with a lot of work and I'm busy, but you know, I try my best. All right guys, until next time. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time guys.